Well, 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 it's time to keep going uh, with these events. Uh, up now is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Wave 3 DLC. So let's get it going. I'm looking forward to this. Hi. Hello. Alright, I have the game up and ready to go. <laughs> yeah, and as with uh, Big Run, I haven't touched this yet. Wait, sorry, you, you have a room ready? Is that what you said? No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. I, I was just in game and. No, sorry, I, I got disoriented for a second for some reason. I wonder if you can hear my game on the mic. I'm not hearing it. I guess the voice suppression is working right for that then. Alright, what should we do for settings? Yeah. Should we do my preferences? I think 100 or 150cc. Definitely not 200. Oh, I wasn't playing on starting on 200. That sounds awful for tracks we haven't raced on yet. Yeah. I'm just gonna max out the races because let's just go for as long as we want to. I think normal items and easy or normal computer seems uh, fine. I want to do normal. I, I can handle normal or hard. Easy, I just, eh. I feel like there's enough going on, but whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. Does this look good? Mm hmm. Here we go. I am, in fact, using tilt controls, by the way. <laughs> I had my fill of tilt controls in Splatoon 3. Alright, uh, London Loop, Boo Lake, Rock Rock Mountain, Maple Treeway, Berlin Byways, Peach Gardens, Merry Mountain, and Rainbow Road. Screw it, I'm gonna start with Merry Mountain as my pick. Okay. Let's see. I, I wanna try out that, the 3DS, and Maple Treeway first. So. Mary Mountain, 3 Dash River Road, Rock Rock Mountain, and Maple Treeway are the ones I have my yeah, eyes no, on. Uh... Should I say it again? Ah, there it is. Okay. I'm here for you to choose whichever of the other ones you want to do. As long as we get, as long as we get one of the. So. Sorry, what? I honestly didn't know what to pick, so. As long as we get one of the new courses, I'm fine. And once again, I have not played any of these, any of these yet, so I'm, I'm racing blind here. <coughs> ASRT. Oh, All-Stars Racing Transformed, right. I'm not used to seeing the acronym, especially without the opening S and whatnot. Ah, jeez. Reading chat and racing is a fun time. <laughs> Seems like a fun enough course, though. Yeah. Uh, this track kind of vaguely reminds of the ski slope one from uh, Wii, but that's in vibes only. This definitely is not the same track. Uh, in terms of, like, gimmicks and whatnot. You can't stop me. This is how you nerf me. Y you keep my eyes in multiple directions because I play this game a little too much sometimes. I can obviously get my ass whooped by the right person, but, uh... Some folks I know have trouble keeping up with me, so... Yeah, nerf me that way. Also, nah, this doesn't remind me of DK or was DK Summit the name of the one in Wii? I thought DK Summit was, uh, oh no, DK Pass was the DS one, sorry, yeah, that, that checks out. I've, like, barely played Wii, so I don't remember the track names very well. Again, I'm a... The ones I played the most are DS, uh, 8 Deluxe, and Double Dash. And I only really like two of those. That being DS and, uh, 8 Deluxe. Double Dash is fine with friends, and the battle mode, especially while I'm, while I'm Rush, is really fun to me, but in terms of racing by myself, I, I'm not, I'm not a fan of Double Dash all that much. 
I've all, but yeah, I've dabbled in like Super Circuit, Wii, and Seven. I oh, and Super. I hate Super Circuit. Wii is okay. I played Seven after Eight Deluxe. I'm not the biggest fan of Seven. Uh, and to this day, I still have not touched 64. Yeah. <laughs> How much you want about that train is like reusing code or assets from the uh, uh, Rainbow Road train? Well, I didn't finish last. <laughs> You'll get there. I'll take it. I'm using a weird control setup, though, in fairness. I'm actually playing this with just my left hand right now, so if, I can uh, press I my keep... right hand a bit. <laughs> yeah. If I keep, uh, dominating, I'll just, like, switch to a cart combo that I have harder trouble with, but I still like playing as. But Villager plus the bike, red wheels, and center glider has always been my go-to. But if need be, I'll... I'll... Hmm. Is this one of the ones from the new thing, or no? That accidentally selects something from, uh... Alright, it's in... Two new cups out or just one? It's two new cups, so it's in pairs. Okay. Cups one and two, cups three and four, cups five and six. Got it. I will say, though, this is one of the best Rainbow Roads. Which one is this? Uh, seven. Nah. Uh... I'm not sure I feel about this Rainbow Effect, but it's fine, and I'll... Take it over uh, Eight's original Amber Road design. I'm not a fan of Eight's Amber Road. Like it has potential. I don't hate the space station uh, attempt. Oh shit! But I think uh, the colors on Eight's Rainbow are too muted and whatnot. It just looks ugly. I think Eight in general looks weirdly muted, actually. Yeah, as I said before uh, with some folks, um, I like the retro tracks uh, more than the original tracks. Like, that seems to be a weird take because, like, I feel like everyone I know is like, oh man, Electrodrum is awesome, Mount Wario is the best, and it's like, eh, they're alright. I like how Electrodrum looks, but not so much. Um, uh... I wish. Sorry. I wish Electrodrum had more of a varied color palette. I don't like looking at this, like, metallic drained purple everywhere. But, uh, I've said, I believe, that, uh, I think Ace original tracks are, like, uh, realistic with the Mario Edge, whereas the retro tracks are Mario with the realistic edge, which the latter I like a lot more. I like eight's original courses feel tame. Oh, hello. How are you? Um, how are you doing on this road they call a Rainbow Road? Surprisingly alright, considering it's a rainbow road. Yeah. Uh-oh. I say right before screwing up a bit. Well, you're gonna get blue chilled. Or I guess I was, since I took the lead. I thought... It... I didn't think it was going to make that much of a difference by the time I got here. But, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I could have sworn it was going to like hit you pretty soon before either of us got to the finish line. I'm not sure how to feel about this um, uh, visual design for this Rainbow Road, by the way. I, I'd say 64 is look, uh, in this game, so it looks the best. And then I'd put this one above uh, SNES, and then SNES above original. Weirdly, I actually think Ace's take on SNES Rainbow Road gameplay-wise is actually really fun. Technically, I think it's the same from 7, because uh, 7 was actually the first to bring SNES Rainbow Road back. 8 brought back his DLC. Uh, yeah. 
I, I admittedly don't like uh, SNES or GBA tracks that much unless they're like heavily updated like they do in 8. They feel just too flat to me. That includes Rainbow Road. Like it's fun as like a one-off I guess. Like it, it's, it makes sense to have Rainbow Road be the exception in this game, but even so. I like how really weirdly short the course is from what I recall. Oh, it's SNES? Mm-hmm. Yeah. SNES tracks do be like that. Also, this Rock Rock Mountain music, holy shit. I love this. Which game was this course from again? This is 3S. But with, so. But with uh, the weird fucked up 4 plus 8 visuals. This isn't the worst looking course in the past, but uh, there's definitely better ones like Waluigi Pinball. Uh, yeah. I think the Snow Lake or whatever it was called from a GBA in the DLC looks nice, even though it's pretty simplistic, because it has a really neat color palette and whatnot. <laughs> and if you want... Recall, this course is kind of just... I remember this course kind of just being there for me in the original gameplay-wise. Uh, for me, it's somewhere between, it's just sort of there and I really like it. It's not blowing me away, but I also think it's a pretty, uh, solid course overall. Uh, yeah, as I was gonna say, uh, after we, uh, try all the new tracks from 3, we can, like, try a couple from, uh, 2 again if you want. Maybe. Ow. I think after this race I'm gonna switch out my car parts. We might do the same, we'll see though. Ow, ow. I don't hate this art style in the vacuum, I just think it's really fucking odd when you put it in a game with uh, with Ape's art style. Yeah, pretty much. It's not like, it's not even like all the courses are even on par with each other's style, like, I'd say this looks better than what they were going with in uh, Toad Circuit from Wave 1. And there's some... Uh, I believe, uh, Calamari Desert from the previous wave looks pretty nice, all things considered. Not, not quite, like, eight levels of detail, but definitely one of the more detailed tracks. It's weird. Once again, take not quite getting last place. Yeah. So I guess now that I'm hearing it, I guess yours is like coming in slightly here and there, but I don't think it's been too big of an issue. In terms of uh, audio. Alright, but uh, car parts first. So let's do Daisy with the B Dasher. And what wheel should I do? I'm just do Standard, uh... Yeah, screw it, we'll do that. Uh, Boo Lake, sure. I was gonna choose Maple True, but Boo Lake was right there, and I, I'm, I'm interested in trying Boo Lake because it seems like they're splicing in, uh, more gravity gimmicks now, because... Yeah, that's the thing I'm noticing with Wave 3. Uh, wave 1 had no anti-gravity in any of the courses. In Wave 2, there was one course with anti-gravity, and it was a brand new one that was entirely anti-grav. I think now they're mixing it more in Wave 3. I forgot these are big wheels. I wasn't picking them in super hard. This doesn't feel bad. Daisy in a B dash or monster truck feels interesting. Okay, maybe this is too interesting. I'm 
I'm definitely gonna have to reach my wheels uh, when we're done. I'm meant to keep this combination in mind, though. I like the way it feels. <coughs> I can't believe they have chain chops in London. <laughs> Damn, I got my super horn taken. And there goes the blue shell. This music though, I like it. Yeah. I think the DLC courses are slowly getting better on average. It's hard to complain about getting uh, 48 new courses. That was unfortunate. You're welcome. <laughs> Whoa, okay, hello. You were doing that. And this is a fine course. That was a much closer one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably change up my wheels, though, as, as nice as this looks. since I still do with all just one hand, even without tilt controls. <coughs> I can use the stick. Yeah. Well, it's the left stick after all. Yeah. Interesting. I hope at some point we get Daisy Cruiser. And uh, Airship Fortress. Th those are my two big wants right now. Because otherwise, I've gotten a lot of my wants. You know, like Three Deaths Rainbow Road, Waluigi Pinball. Weirdly doing worse with them, uh, this, actually, noticing, but hmm. we'll get used to it, I'm sure. I'm chugging a little too on the track. Yeah, maybe it is actually just the track, to think of it. Okay, that's an interesting one. That was a path. Yeah. Probably based on the 3DS version. Yeah. I mean, even still, uh... 
there's been some funkier remixes from what I recall. Also, I gotta say, I'm not a fan of Choco Choco Mountain's music. In the, or is it. Wait, was it Choco Choco? Or is it just Choco Mountain? Whatever. Point is, I'm not a fan of the music they use for this uh, one, but I'm also not a fan of stuff like banjos and harmonicas. Which I think one of the, at least one of those is one of the main instruments in that. Oh, gods. Okay, well, at least they put a guard rail there. Honestly, to my understanding, I feel like a lot of the tracks are like, Tor took a lot from Seven, and Eight's pulling from Tor. I mean, now they're getting a little more spicy. The funny like, thing is, some of the courses legitimately, like, you know how they're doing weird things with the art style in uh, these courses in 8? Yeah. I understand, some of them legitimately just look better in Tor, actually. Yeah, I have looked, though. Like, they are doing differences. Like, Calamari Desert is different in 8 than it is in Tor. You bastard. I... It is not my time. <laughs> I'm getting Mario Karted out here. I gotta learn how to better do that. That's an interesting one. She got first. No, I thirst for first. <laughs> These tracks are fun. I'm glad the waves are getting better. Yeah. Because wave one was kind of bad. <laughs> wave two had a lot more quality, and I think this one seems to be mm -hmm. edging up a bit more. The only thing holding it back is it doesn't have, you know, Waluigi Pinball. I think this one has like an underwater section. <laughs> I like this look. Oh yeah, there's an anti-gravity section. And there's the underwater. Oh, it's kind underwater. That it's honestly not a particularly steep slope would be anti-gravity. Yeah, but I think it's more about, like, the controls during that bit, I guess. But yeah, it is weird. Yeah, I know. Just kind of weird how, like, obvious it is that they had to... I mean, this is steeper and it doesn't have that. It's kind of weird how they, like, had to, to noticeably tack it on like that. Hmm. <laughs> It still makes it more interesting, though. I, I'm glad they did this rather than just making a flat surface. Oh yeah, no, it's just, you know, it is still kind of a little, uh... <coughs> oh no. Also, you say that's steeper, but, uh, if you look, you're still anti-grab when underwater. Oh, okay. That makes sense, actually, then. Yeah. Basically, only a small portion of the track is an anti-grav. Honestly, that's kind of odd in of itself. Whatever, it's a nice change of pace. I mean, I'll take it for the change of pace compared to most of the DLC courses. It's just, it is kind of a little odd. Ah, almost had you. Okay, that happens. I just got Mario Party, I think. 
Oh. Kinda. Mario kinda. Like, run into a banana peel, then get pushed off the course. Oh. <laughs> That's the salmon run mood. <laughs> What now? We did London Live. Alright. Uh, Peach Gardens. Uh, while I do have a lot of nostalgia for DS, I recall Peach Gardens being one of the weaker ones of DS to me. I still like it, it's just... I actually eh. remember like that course. Mm. Who knows? It's Maybe not it... one of the, like, absolute top of the top DS courses, but it's, like, right below them for me, I feel like. No, yeah, that's fair. I'll take it over, you know, shit like DK Pass. I don't like DK Pass. If it makes sense, from what I recall, this is one of the most varied feeling in normal courses I think I've ever played in a Mario Kart game. Hmm. Meanwhile, I treat it as uh, one of the most bland, uh, more out there courses. But well, there isn't nice. really that much going on gimmick wise. It is a pretty normal track for the most. Yeah, I, I think I think I consider. Uh, the standard race aesthetic normal tracks, you know, like all the Mario circuits and Yoshi circuit, you know, all the circuits I consider normal, and then everything else is themes. Anyway, I'm not fond of what they've done with the aesthetic here, honestly. I think it may have actually looked more interesting in the original. It looks weirdly plasticky here. Honestly, I think I'll take it over DS. Like, as much as I love DS, I wouldn't call it much of a looker in some instances. I recall this being a very bland look in DS. Now, Airship Fortress, while Luigi pinned all of that, that's that fine. the case, honestly, for me, personally. But here's the question. Would you take it over Wii? Because if I recall correctly, I think the Wii version had a lot of bloom. Yeah, we in general had a lot of bloom. Turns out, um, uh, if you can believe it, despite we having a lot of bloom, yes, I would actually probably take the Wii version specifically over this. Oh, damn. Even after what you were talking about last night? Yes, if you can believe it. You know, for all the issues we has with bloom, I would actually probably take how it looked in that game. I actually think that as weird as Wii's Bloom is, I feel like it is legitimately the only severe problem with the visuals of that game, actually, whereas everyone acts like everything about it looks horrible. Hmm. I think I dislike Wii's look the most, despite how I don't really super hate Bloom as much oh, as other people. Oh, I don't like Wii's look. <laughs> I want to be whoa, clear. Whoa, whoa, what? What? But, uh... Like, I'm not fond of Wii's look, it's just... Also, oh... Oh. Yeah, this huh. wasn't, uh, the original. That's weird. Uh, I, I see they've been doing, uh, to this track, what they've been doing to, like, uh, some of the original tour tracks in Calamari Desert. It's like, hey, you know how this course plays out? No, you don't. A glider section? What? Yeah, here I was about to be like, yeah, they kind of removed a weird tiny pathway in this version, but they do that, I guess, so it makes up for it. So I don't even like that tiny path was, like, hyper important. It's kind of weird that they did remove it. Ah, shit, 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 I fucked up. I win. I'm being Mario Karted aggressively. <laughs> I've noticed. <coughs> but yeah, actually, um, I, I, I don't really care for how it looks here. Mm. I think maybe I'm just getting a little soft on the DLC tracks because I mostly just hate tracks like Toad Circuit, Chaka Mountain Coconut Mall, because I feel like they're the most plasticky. I think overall, uh, these looks are very balanced. I, I think Wave 3 is possibly one of the most balanced looking cups so far. Yeah, yeah, it is actually probably the better looking ones overall, just... I, I actually am not fond of what they do in Peach Garden visually. I, think, I don't know. I think Wave 2 has a couple higher heights, but Wave 2 also had a, some low lows, like that weird uh, SNES track. 
Yeah. I'll Roll still the take what they did to Peach Gardens or what they did to um, uh, Coconut Mall, though. I will say that. Yeah. Coconut we're, we're... Mall is just sad. We're on agreement, though. Fuck Wave 1. Pretty much. Like, there's like a couple... Though, if I remember correctly, it did add that I'm a like, ninja course, and I do like that one. Honestly, I don't that, like yeah. it that much because it just. I don't like some of the turns in that one. It feels. Yeah. Alright, I was trying to dodge the cars, but I failed. I kinda like the fact that they just randomly made a course that's like a harder rainbow road for no reason. I just find that really funny for some reason. Yeah. So I kinda actually do really like that one in particular, but otherwise I don't really like the way. <laughs> well, at least they fixed the gameplay of Coconut Mall, so I mean, I'll take that at least. It still looks awful though. Yep. It'd be nice if they went back and uh, redid the visuals of Coconut Mall because. Mm, mm, hmm, hmm. It literally looks worse than the 3DS game, and like. Yeah, that, I'm that not sure I fully agree with. What 3DS looks like if you uh, aren't running out. Like, if, on a 3DS screen, uh, 7 looks fine. I, I have but the 7. The moment you start to try to hold it up to. The moment you try to scrutinize the look of 7, it looks really rough, actually. I played 7 it, on my 3DS as a cartridge. I just hated playing 7, uh, like that. Granted, that's more so for, like, things like controls and how it approached difficulty felt a little off. I think it has some pretty good tracks, though. Like, it had some good retro picks, and the new courses are pretty good, like Neo Bowser City, uh, Wario Shipyard, stuff like that. I like it. But Not I don't know. Music park. Yeah. I, I think 3DS controls eh, but has good courses. Yeah. Honestly, it's much. it's a repeat of Double Dash for me, but it's like an opposite control issue. I feel like 3DS is too stiff. I feel like Double Dash is too loose. For me, DS and Eight, Del uh, and Eight Deluxe are different sweet spots. I, I, don't, I don't like how Double Dash feels. I don't like how 7 feels. <coughs> I think we played all the uh, Wave 3 ones, so we can start replaying them, or we can go back and check out yeah. some choice ones from 1 and 2 if you want. What do you think? Hmm. Let's see. I like I like how Snowdon looks. I want to show you that one again. I don't think I've actually tried either of the tour courses from uh, Wave Two. All right, we can do that real quick. But I've sucked at Snowland, so I can't really take that back. I think. I'm not sure if I've tried that one either, though. So that works out. Like it's not got the simple look, but I think it wears it to its advantage. From what I recall, actually, I think 7 might have been the worst looking Mario Kart, weirdly. Again, it looks fine at first until you start actually paying attention a bit more, and oh. then it falls apart very quickly. I kind of want to say the character models had yeah. let a lower polygon count the DS, which is and hilarious. No, no, I wouldn't say so. Also, hello. Oh, I, I could be remembering wrong, but I think someone actually pointed out that they literally had a lower polygon count than the character models in DS, which is Maybe. really funny. I, I I wouldn't say Seven's the worst looking one though. I I'd give that to Super. You know, you know that's fair. I only think Super is my favorite Mode 7 game visually on the Super Nintendo. Like, I think it may be one of the less good-looking ones I've seen on there, if anything. Super, uh, Super Mario Kart would start being a SNES game, and, like, only being possible on SNES at the time, you know, compared to NES. I, Super Mario Kart has NES game vibes to me somehow. 
And I'd like to uh, remind the court that I do not like NES games uh, by default, or like by and large. Like, I, there are ones I like. Like, I've been playing Mega Man, and I like Mega Man. In fact, I have played. Well, I've already played some X games, uh, the first six on NES, and the GB ones. Um, and I'll play Mega Man 7 on stream at some point soon. But, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I don't like NES games all that much. I don't like, you know, the ever-iconic Mario one. I don't like Lost Levels. I don't like the ever-iconic Zelda one. I don't like the ever-iconic Metroid one. They're all just gross to me. I can see why people like them, but I don't gel with them. I think they look hideous, to be honest. I don't think those looks held up. They're iconic, but they're ugly, in my opinion. Weirdly, the one of those that I probably like the gameplay of least, Metroid 1, I think is the one that suffers most from this was very distinctly made for a CRT visually, so... I mean, I guess. I, I actually just... think it's probably the one that holds up best visually of the bunch, and worst gameplay-wise of the bunch. Mm. I what do you think about this course, by the way? It's alright. Mm, that's fair. I, I, I like the way the sky and the ice in the distance looks and all that. I think it's a nice yeah, color palette. it looks nice. It that, that's pretty much it. It's, it's still a GBA thing. course at its heart with, like, a little yeah. elevation variance. Uh, what was I going to say? But yeah, there are NES games I like. I, I like the NES Mega Man Saga. Uh, well, 3 is kind of the low point, but... Yeah, uh... Here, I'll give you the tour tracks, New York Minute. Oh, hey. <laughs> but, uh... I, I, I like the NES Mega Man Saga. Kirby's Adventure's alright, though I feel it runs a bit poorly. Uh, Mario 2 is alright. I, I like Mario 3, though it doesn't hold a candle to me. Uh, a candle to Mario there are Wolfram. other good-looking NES games than just Mega Man Metroid and Metal Storm. Uh, I actually think that um, uh, Ninja Gaiden looks, like, fine at least. But, um, uh, I think... What was it again? I had it, like, for a moment, a number one. Oh yeah, Crystallis. Um, uh, that game. I really like the look of that game, actually. Mm. By the way, I feel personally very eh about New York Minute. It just feels off. Like, it's fine, but it just feels a tad off. The thing about that game visually is that, like, uh, the thing about Crystallis visually is that, um, uh, it has a kind of simple look to it overall, but it looks a lot less like an NES game and a lot more like a Game Boy Color game. Which is probably why I got a Game Boy Color port later. The visuals basically completely unchanged. Though, uh, the visuals were just about the only thing that was completely unchanged, sadly, and that was kind of a problem. It's not usually considered a very good port. Among its many problems, it spoils one of the big plot twists of the game in the intro cutscene. I didn't mean to do that. Do, do not play the Game Boy Color port of Crystallis as your first time playing it. It, it mm. will spoil one of the game's big plot twists in the literal intro cutscene. I'm getting Mario Karted. <laughs> yeah. I just got Mario Karted. I got hit by a red shell. With such timing, that made it so I didn't get hit by a blue shell because of vulnerability frames. And I got hit by another red shell, and then immediately after another oh, red yeah. shell, that vulnerability frames protect me from, and then I lightning was, immediately I was, after. I was really t trying to time my red shells, it's like, oh, blue shells come, I got a red shell. It's time to abuse it. <laughs> I know there's a vulnerability time, so I gotta wait, I gotta strike perfectly, and I didn't strike yeah, perfectly I, on I, the second one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting Mario Kart this time. Yeah. I got hit by another red shell. <laughs> it didn't get third in a second. Yeah. As I constantly say, honestly, uh, to me, Atari is like, you know, the alpha phase of video games. NES is like the beta phase of video games. And then, like, SNES and Genesis are where it really starts. And not that they're perfect either, it's just... That, that's where you start getting games that I actually, like, super like. Like Mario World. 
I am of the opinion that it's a lot more complicated than that when you actually look clo really closely oh. at what games are releasing around that time. I know, I know, I the know. The problem wasn't that Atari era games weren't good. The problem was that Atari 2600 games weren't good. No, no, I, I get that. It's just like the, the popular culture surrounding them. It's like, oh man, Atari games, or oh man, the fucking greats like Mario 1, Zelda 1, and Metroid 1. It's like, yeah, I, I, I couldn't disagree more. I get why they're iconic. I get why they're beloved. I'm not gonna say anyone can't love them, but being a first game in a series does not automatically make it good for me, even if it fucking saved the industry. Yeah. Also, there were good Atari games, by the way. Just to be clear, the, the poor Space Invaders was recognizably Space Invaders, and Space Invaders is actually pretty solid. So, if we give the system that. Hmm. One of the few things I will actually give that system. Also, Pitfall and Seek. Yeah. Pitfall it, and Seek are good. I don't think it helps that I don't seem to gel with many arcade style games or like a lot of arcade games. Like, there, there are, again, exceptions. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, hang on. But something just happened. Um. Yeah. What? I, it probably won't show up on the stream, but I went over a, a ramp. Like, a glider ramp. Did a trick on it, and then it just counted as a normal ramp, and I fell in the water. <laughs> My god. But yeah, I don't seem to mesh well with, like, the endless arcade-style stuff, like, like Donkey Kong, Pac-Man. I, I, I don't mesh with those kind of games, and it seems like that while it was being phased out over several generations uh, from the mainstream, it still seems like the NES still had some, like, growing pains and arcade DNA somewhere in there. Part of that's because they didn't have mappers until after Super Mario Bros., and they literally could not do anything else due to the hardware limits before then. No, that's fair, and uh, knowing what I know about Mario 1, like, I recently saw a video about why uh, about how Mario's glitch levels work, and it explained uh, how the levels work in general, I'm like, oh damn, that's... They really had to work around a lot, huh? Yeah. But just because um, it's the impressive. Fact that Mario One had levels instead of like, more like about four levels that looped yeah. endlessly. It, it, if I had more than that, it should not have been possible with NES at the time. Yeah, but just because that's impressive doesn't mean I find it fun. I know. I'm just saying though, the console hardware of the time could not have handled that though. It's just like, Mario 1 I don't like, Lost Levels is even worse than Mario 1, uh, 2 is alright, uh, and 3 is where it really starts for me, and World is where it, like, really, really starts for me. Yeah, um, part of the reason, actually, that Mega Man 1 is actually a pretty decent game is genuinely because it's one of the first, it's not necessarily, like, nearly the first, don't get me wrong, it's one of the earlier NES games to use a mapper. Yeah. So I was able to hold more data. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of the good NES games tend to have like funky shit going on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, that. That was extremely close. Yeah. It's like I think Mario Three has this whole oh, thing. Oh yeah, console ports of Cubert aren't generally terrible looking, and Cubert is technically endless, but has a surprisingly long amount of time before it's actually starting to repeat itself. Yeah. So. And, like, I recall Mario 3 having this whole thing going on where, um, it has additional onboard stuff, but it's not up to me, uh, where it allows it to scroll both, uh, vertical and horizontally because of, like, the additional stuff, but not 100% well, that's why it has the weird stuff on the edge that's cut off yeah, by TVs. The, the, the weird stuff on the edge would not have actually been visible on TVs at the time because of our scan, though. Oh, I'm aware. I literally just said that. Uh. I didn't say it as gracefully as you, but yeah. But I was gonna say. Ah, shit, I forgot. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Any, NES games fight an uphill battle with me. Again, there, there are good ones. They, they've won me over, but. Some of the ones people hold on a pedestal, it just kind of turn me off. 
Yeah, fair. Um, have you heard um, uh, about? Have you seen how Atari 2600 games were programmed? By the way, Space Invaders should literally not have been possible. Yeah, I feel like I've been hearing a little bit more about uh, Atari games just being a fucking miracle that exists at all. Yeah, um, it was a system quite literally only made for like symmetrical two-player games like Pong. Uh, I talked about. That. Here we go. Oh, and Even I got the boost. Pong is not easy to program on that system, though. It is, like, the the absolute cheapest of the cheap that it could have been. The 2600 is, like, hilariously cheaply made. They cheaped out literally everything. <laughs> I don't know. I, like, I, you know how the NES has, like, sprite support? You can just tell it, okay, I want to have a sprite here. And here's what that looks like. And on this you have layer, to change that first scan line on the Atari 2600 manually. Incredible. Yeah, I think I saw a video about that. Uh, so lap two is on the tracks. How do you feel? <laughs> I think I've done this one before. Is the thing? Oh, okay. I think yeah. now I've actually done all the. Uh, from uh, Wave 2 at this point. Yeah, I just, I feel like SNES and Genesis is when games are having a little bit of leg room. And even then, Genesis yeah, also it has... Yeah, kind of show. Genesis still has limitations I didn't expect. Like, you know, I've only, I've mostly played, like, the Sonic games, uh, where they seem to have mastery of the tech. And, like, all this time, until recently, I never knew that Genesis couldn't support Parallax. <laughs> they used tricks to get around it. Yep, the Genesis only supports two parallax layers and that's it. Like, you only have a foreground layer and, like, a background layer and that's it. And, uh... Sonic was not nearly the first Genesis game. And I mean, the fact that it's the first one people talk about, I think, says a lot. I mean, oh, it's not I, the first I, one people talk about, it's one of the first ones people I, talk I, about. I know, like, I'm, I'm aware there's, like, stuff before Sonic, and they probably have their own impressive stuff. It's just, that's where my experience is. I'm, I'm gonna admit, most of my experience with the Genesis is Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Sonic 3D Blast. I've, like, only played a couple other ones for a few seconds, and I, like, things like Golden Axe I've hated. Ugh. <laughs> Not mean to select that horse, but okay, sure, whatever. Let's see if it doesn't limit. Not. Um, the, the funny thing about the Super Nintendo is that um, uh, it, it's basically just a soup up, souped up a uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah, no, I get that, but it still allowed more possibilities, and, like, I'm not about to be like, oh... Oh, yeah, I know, absolutely, yeah, but most I'm, of them are actually graphical. Yeah, I'm not about to be like, oh, graphics and power are everything, but, like, I, I feel like at a certain point, you you probably should have a certain level of power to get things done. I think we're in, yeah. a, good, I think we're in a good spot nowadays, and I, th I think by SNES, it was easier to have that breathing room to, from my perspective. Yeah, actually, from my understanding, the main reason the Super Nintendo is so has so many impressive games, though, is actually less because it's a significantly more powerful system. It is more powerful than the NES. Don't get me wrong. Dev it's because they use a processor really um. similar to it, which meant that developers could really easily use every trick they'd already learned. Yeah. Plus, I think you know people are trying to be like, all right, this game design works. This game design doesn't. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Which is why late NES games like Metal Storm are fantastic, because they already had worked all that out, and they already worked out how to use the hardware. Um, I, I think it's mostly early NES games I hate, which again, tend to be the iconic ones. Like the black box stuff. I, I, I don't know. It's I think funny. The thing about, uh, hmm? I would say it's funny because I, I feel like industry had some growing pains with Atari NES stuff, and then they started getting their uh, footwork in SNES. And then I feel once we got to like 32 and 64 bit, I think we had growing pains again. <laughs> 
Because everything's gotta be 3D, but how the fuck do you do 3D? <laughs> and then, of course, I, I feel... With the SNES is to the NES, I feel the GameCube is a 64, and of course, PS2 to PS1, all that. Anyway, you were saying sorry? Um, I feel like part of the thing with the arcade games you mentioned, I think the specific ones you tend to mention actually say a lot about why you probably don't like early arcade games. A lot of the more fondly remembered ones are the ones with more personality, stuff like Donkey Kong and uh, Pac-Man. I don't think those are the better playing ones. Hmm. I, I admittedly I lack experience. I do not actually think either of those play very well. I mean, Pac-Man, yes, but um, uh, it's still, like, fairly simplistic. Yeah, um, I, I, I have limited experience with arcades, I will fully admit. Uh, what else is going to tack onto that? Uh, I, I'm aware there's probably better stuff out there, and, like, there is stuff I've played in arcades that I enjoy, but it's mostly stuff like 3D racing games. Uh, there's still more I was going to say about that. Shit. Oh yeah, I, I think it's the NES case again, where it's like, all the iconic stuff, it's like, eh, I don't, I don't see it. What I think also is one of the most fascinating things with all this, is that I'm, uh, I think one of the first widely distributed games ever, Space War, is actually, it's like, shockingly good for how early it is. Hmm. But, uh... Despite being one of the earliest widely distributed video games, uh, because it was, like, for some weird specific computer system that not nearly everyone had access to, and Pong was the first one that, like, got really, really properly widely distributed, it gets lost in the discussion a bit more than it should. Yeah. And that game is actually really good, so that, I find that really unfortunate. Yeah. Also, additionally, uh... Uh, I think another reason I arcade games don't gel is because, well, uh, Endless has a hard time appealing to me. There are there are Endless games I like, but I tend to like things I can, like, work through. I, I like having my little checklist or, like, little stories I can work through. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, understandable. So it's hard for that to gel for me, but also, uh... I, I think another thing about all this, like, games of yesteryear that I don't super like, it's like... I think I am very aggressively, like, the opposite of, uh, like, no, wait, no. I, I structured that wrong. Um, as I say, uh, I tend to treat all games on, like, the same footing. Like, I, I don't care if they're old or anything. Uh, is it as fun as the new stuff? Is the new stuff as fun as the old stuff? I, I don't really, I, like, I'm, like, I don't subscribe to it's older, therefore better, or anything like that. I... And I'll try to like acknowledge my biases, like, oh yeah, I like this game from my childhood, but I don't, th I don't think aspects of it hold up very well. It's like, SpongeBob movie game had some weird shit, or I grew up with the B movie game, which I loved, but looking back on it, I think it's fucking weird. So it's just like, I, I, I don't care if it was like revolutionary or anything. How does it feel to play today? And I'm also I like. I try to at least keep in mind the technical limits old games are running under, not because it affects my enjoyment, but because at least I can respect an old game that had interesting technical achievements, even if I don't like it necessarily. Oh no, that's fair. I'm trying to keep that in mind more too, but you know, as I said before, revolutionary is cool and all, but it doesn't mean shit to me if it's not fun. Like, I'll, I'll gladly appreciate how, revo how revolutionary something is, but for me, the games are all about, you know, playing the games. Yeah, yeah. I will uh, note, if you ever want to try out Space War, by the way, that it is a two-player-only game. Ah. Uh, uh, so let me read Which this Which is another reason it gets lost in the discussion so much, because, like, it's easy to say, oh, I'll just play a version of Pong with AI, or, oh... Um, uh, I'll play Pong with a friend, or something like that. That's pretty easy to find someone to play with. So if you want to play Space Wars, like, Oh, I have to find someone to play this obscure old game with. How yeah. do I do that? <laughs> yeah. No, that's interesting, uh, about what uh, Heather said in chat. <coughs> yeah, 
Yeah. It's like, again, I have to deal with the fact that I do have ex expe uh, exceptions in my taste. Like, I don't like, you know, endless games and, like, you know, endless tile games like Tetris. I, I really do not gel with. But, the, again, there, there's a couple exceptions. I think there's, like, a Mario Party, like, score-based minigame you could play forever in DS. That was all right. Uh, I like 2048. I, I think technically that has to end sometime, but... Yeah. I'm just not a fan of, like, the bog standard. It's like, oh, here's your Bejeweled, here's your Tetris. It's just like, eh. I, I, don't, I don't feel it. <laughs> It's like, oh yes, Tetris may be, quote-unquote, the perfect video game because it lacks things to do wrong, but it also lacks, you know, interesting uh, interesting points and fun things to me because it's not what I like about games by default. <laughs> I like big old adventures and whatnot. <laughs> it was probably the perfect game for Game Boy because that was an ideal game for pulling oh, out yeah. for like 10 minutes for a gameplay session on the bus. That's something I'm also trying to keep in mind. It's like games are played in different circumstances. Like some of them are meant to be big things to sit down with. Others are more so time wasters, stuff like that. Yeah, and Tetris is an extremely good time waster and only has so much depth in its original forms as anything more than that. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the Tetris Grandmaster games, uh, those are kind of a little wild mechanically, actually. Yeah. Also, yeah, the bike suits are fun. I think this track's art style is okay. It's not amazing, but I think it's fine in the vacuum, and it's better than shit like Toad Circuit. Yeah. I think a funny thing about, um, uh... I think it's actually a pretty funny thing about early games is that, like, a lot of them, um, Western developed, say, Genesis games ended up weirdly rough, but if you actually look at early arcade games, um, some of the best, like, really early arcade games were actually from Western developers. <laughs> Stuff like Defender. Like, Defender is fantastic. Um... But it, it has a very bland name, it has a fairly <laughs> bland aesthetic. Ow. Uh, well, okay, that, that's not quite right, but it's, a, it's an aesthetic with not much personality to it. So, I don't think people talk about it as much as they probably should because it doesn't seem, like, aesthetically interesting. You ever just drift looking backwards? <laughs> yeah, happens. Also, well, at, at the messages in chat, uh oh. Yeah, I think Mushroom Gorge is fun. Sorry, I, th I think Scott the Waz's bedroom is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, let's see, what are some other good examples of early arcade games? I still wonder how you would feel about Missile Command. I'm mm. still wondering how you'd feel about Missile Command, because that game is also really interesting. Yeah, also I feel like another thing I've noticed is like, I feel like in some ways I kind of do better with like, range stuff as opposed to melee stuff. It's like... Oh yeah, I'll play like Metro games in like hard mode and shit, but if I even think about playing Hollow Knight, it'll kick my god's damn ass. Yeah, which uh, funnily enough is another thing about the, those other early arcade games. A lot of them, uh, the stuff that I was talking about has very competitive, a variety of ranged combat. Um, a lot of the arcade games you've played haven't. Mm -hmm. Defender is a game about flying around in a spaceship really oh. fast, trying to save people who are, like, basically there's, like, alien abductions and whatnot going on, You're trying to save oh. people who are being abducted by aliens, while also, um, uh, not dying, because there's also a bunch of ships trying to attack you, and there's, like, a bunch of different types of them, and 
it's surprisingly complex, ridiculously fast-paced, and I don't know, it's really good for how early an arcade game it is. <laughs> I will say there is admittedly a context in which I found Pac-Man okay, come to think of it. Because mm -hmm. uh, there was a Pac-Man arcade machine uh, in the dentist that I went to as a kid in the waiting room. That was a nice time waster. But I could imagine going to an arcade for Pac-Man, you know? Yeah, yeah. I will also say this Pac-Man is notably better than Pac-Man. Yeah, so maybe I'll... expect it to be, but... Maybe I'll try it one day. It's just... It's hard to get my hands on for obvious reasons. That, yeah. That, and it's just like, okay, Miss Pac-Man could be an interesting try, but it's not as high of a try it could be compared to other games I want to play because, well, it's still Pac-Man. Yeah, but it's Pac-Man that properly has multiple levels, and it's Pac-Man that has AI that's more interesting. Um, also, I it hope... It is we... basically a better Pac-Man. Yeah, also, while we were, uh, bunched together during that glider, I hope you're doing, like, a, like a really cool long handshake or something. <laughs> oh shit. Also, yeah. Frog, aka Fairy, is playing as John Splatoon. Correct. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a Jane Splatoon myself. <laughs> No, admittedly, uh, when you're explicitly using the Splatoon 1, like, promo designs, I, I I like the 2 and 3 promo designs more. I know that's just my stinky little Switch Splatoon ass, not playing Wii U probably, but I, I always found, like, the promotional, like, the promotional and UI look and all that of Splatoon 1 just kind of, eh. But again, that's just me. That's just me. I have my biases. That does mean I wish we had, like, the Splatoon 2 style Inklings and Octolings here as racers. That's probably also partially because they're also portrayed with, like, Orange and blue, which I find is a weaker color scheme than pink and green. <laughs> that, that's just flat out color bias there. I, I still think out of the three games, Splatoon 2 has the best uh, color scheme. I mean, it, it's really cool that Splatoon 3 is basically a non-binary look, but in terms of wanting to look at it as an aesthetic, I, I, I like pink and green more. <laughs> Like Ralsei plush. What if I randomly do a normal swords? Sure. Grumble Grumble is one of the good ones. <laughs> As I said before, the Lightning Cup is arguably the best uh cup in this game to me because it has TikTok Clock, the best DS track, and now even better in eight. Well actually maybe not the best in original. Like I'd I'd say TikTok Clock, well, Luigi Pinball, and uh, Airship Fortress are all, like, my top picks for DS, but it's one of the top tracks in 8 Deluxe, I'd say. It has uh, Piranha Plant Slide, which is pretty decent. Uh, Grumble Volcano, which is pretty decent. And then it ends off on N64 Rainbow Road, so how can you go wrong? <laughs> well, it could have gone wrong if they didn't change N64 Rainbow Road from the original. I, I meant how can you go wrong with this selection as opposed to with this development. Like, the tracks as presented to us as they currently are. Yeah, true. Because, like, I, Sumi, I I don't care as much about Mount Wario and Electrodrome as others. I think tracks like Dolphin Shoals are kind of weak. They have potential, but they're just missing some special sauce in my opinion.
Uh oh, Mostly you're gonna Well, I like 8 Deluxe specifically. I was always confused by the sentiment of 8, like the original 8 at the time being considered the best Mario Kart. Especially with the uh, shitty battle mode? Yeah. But I mean, even without that, I was actually pretty confused because before the DLC courses were added to make it a little bit larger, half the lineup was actually pretty weak, if you ask me. Yeah. Yeah, my only eight experience is the locks because, again, while I wanted a Wii U, I never got one. And, and as a reminder, uh, in the original version of 8, you had to unlock all the tracks still, like in any other Mario Kart. Which, kind if I'm gonna be honest, I like unlocking stuff. Trust me, in 8, of course, Lena specifically, you, you, if you had to do that in the original 8, you would probably gain an appreciation for 8 Deluxe changing that. I explicitly go through Mario Kart's single player first, unlocking all the cups and whatnot as I go. I know. It, it, just to be clear, I would normally prefer unlocking courses. It is the fact that this is very specifically 8. Yeah, but at the same time, 8 Deluxe makes me miss that. It's like, ah, oh, they're all just unlocked. Okay. Aw. It's like, all I get to unlock is car parts, and I think that's a flaw system too, because... Uh, I feel like it'd be better if they get, had, there was like a little in-game shop, so you could be like, okay, I want to spend my coins here as opposed to, oh, I have this now? Okay, you know? Yeah. I, I wish the car customization was a little better, because I don't see it as an upgrade to cho just choosing a different car in DS and Wii. It just means I have more buttons to push. I don't really see it as one either, honestly. If it was that like... Being said, if it was uh, like... If, if they had, like, went back to, like, pre-built cars, and then you had, like, a little garage you can make your own and save it as a preset, that'd be nice, I think. If it was, like, a tad bit more in-depth. And then you could just make what you want and then jump into it later, so it's still, like, a pretty, like, casual, just jump it and go kind of game. I thought I was going to say something else, but I frickin' forgot. <coughs> Theme of my life. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I, I also don't love all the DLC courses here. Like, they're all right. It's just like, you know, everyone loves Excite Bike. And I'm just like, you're like, it's okay. Uh, I didn't, I, honestly, I never paid enough attention to know for the longest time that it was randomized, but even then, it's just like, eh. It feels kind of standard to me. It's it's a nice, like, break uh, from the norm, but I wouldn't put anywhere on this, anywhere near the same level as, you know, TikTok Clock, Rainbow Road, etc. Part of the problem with Eight's lineup is that it kind of is just really lacking in decent, normal courses. A lot of the best ones are really gimmicky, from what I recall. And even those aren't as good as past gimmicky Mario Kart game courses a lot of the time. So it's like... I feel happened? like I feel like I like standard courses a bit more than some people, where, where it's like, you know, some people have grown at Luigi Circuit coming back in something like, I don't know. While it's kind of standard, I like Luigi Circuit. It's nice to have a couple of standard tracks here and there, and it has an interesting gimmick. Oh, by Luigi Circuit, I mean I specifically mean like the one in GameCube, uh, Double Dash. But there are good ones like. Uh, I think it's Big Blue, Dragon Driftway, something like that's fun. Yeah, I come to think that Excite Bike is actually an early um, uh, NES game where I kind of wondered how you would feel about it, come to think of it. Have you ever played Excite Bike? Uh, I was, I was thinking of eventually getting the 3D Classics version. Partially because I know it has like little tiny improvements, like you can actually save your courses now. Yeah. Only thing is, 
I, I know it's like technically like remade. It's not like an NES ROM, but whatever. It seems like it's remade faithfully enough. Yeah, it is from what I know. It plays basically. It was one of the only thing. It, it's like the closest there's ever been to a like proper successor to it from what I know, uh, which is unfortunate. I feel like I've heard know. mixed things about Excited Fight 64. Oh, hey, Sam oh, Brinsel. I know what force we're getting. I don't know. Is. I don't know. It's a tough call. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we could do now? You know what we could do? What? I think we got a feel for the courses. We could, like, do 200. <laughs> Say fuck it, chaos mode. You know, we could. I probably want to take a quick break before that if we're going to do that. Because that seems like a good opportunity to do so. No, that's fair. How long of a break? Uh, let's see... Probably it would mostly be a break to like get a drink and go to the bathroom, so... Probably like 10 minutes or so. Okay, I'll probably like... I don't know, maybe play a few tracks of my own or a cup or something. Try to get like a trophy, I don't know. Yeah. It, just to be clear, that's an intentionally pessimistic estimate in case that uh, takes longer than I'm actually expecting, which is probably closer to five minutes. Yeah. Oh, there we go, finally did it. Ah, shit, and I... You want to be on the safe side. I'll get you yet. I just got Mario Kart. Then I can take advantage of it. You ever get hit by lightning and then just hit by a blue shell immediately after? Uh, yes, but typically it's in a way where I have the vulnerability. That wasn't what happened for me here, unfortunately. <laughs> I got actually hit by both. Yeah, not gonna lie, the fucked up part of me that wanted to take first was like, oh man, I hope it, like, I hope it just enough time to, like, bypass your invincibility. <laughs> Understandable. Listen, I love you, you're a good friend, but you're going down. the message. Oops. Uh, let's see. Ah, I see about the excited bike thing. Gotcha. I see. That's how it's gonna be, huh? Honestly, I don't really know a lot about excited bike 64, but there's like a morbid curiosity about it with me that I, I really want to try it one day. Probably after I try the NES one. Yeah, as far as I know, it's I think it may be one of the only other proper Excite Bike games because while well, they did make another uh, game technically part of the series, I think it was Excite Trucks. Hmm. Which is not the same thing remotely. Grill off with Excite Truck. I mean, as far as I know, Excite Trucks is still a pretty good game. It's just not really, it's not really a follow-up to Excite Bike gameplay-wise, from what I know. There's like elements of it, maybe, but hmm, it's just not. It's not a follow-up to Excite Bikes. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. And this, and even that's like the most recent game they've made in that series, as far as I know. Like, there's the 3DS version of the original, and that's that's been it, basically it. It's a series Nintendo's been treating weirdly terribly. Also, I randomly got a communication error. That was probably oh, because, of because you uh, left the group. Okay. Uh, I'm a few seconds on the stream, so I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's fair. I was, about, I was about to say, it's like, yeah, you said you want to take a break, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I want to take a quick break. 
Here, fuck it. Let's have, let's try a time trial. I never play time trials, so let's let's see how I deal with that while you're taking a break. <laughs> okay, I uh, will be right back while you do that. Give me a big shit. <coughs> mm hmm. Rock, rock, mountain. This ghost is gonna kick my ass, but whatever. I like this music. I like electric guitars and shit like that. Ah shit, I fucked up. Now this is Excite Trucks. I'm not doing too hot, I guess. Oh well. Clearly the ultimate stream game to play sometime would be uh, Cars the Video Game, and its sequel would be International. My old PS2 disc still works. If the old PS2 still works, if my composite capture still works. pipes. <laughs> yeah, let's get another go. Actually, let's vary it up. Let's do a different track.
Uh oh. Uh. Yeah. That's all that happened in slow motion. I'm not the best at time trials. I don't play time trials a lot. <laughs> Is miles ahead. Damn it. Oh, right, shit. <laughs> Ooh, Bob is real bad in this. I'll say though, Daisy cute. I didn't mean to push or try, I just brain empty on that one. Another thing from Tor, I wish this game had, if it's gonna have Tor stuff. As fucking as I, much as I hate gotcha elements, Tor has some good costume designs. Like, give us Witch Rosalina in Mario Kart 8, you fucking cowards. And while I do not give a single slightest shit about Diddy Kong, I do think it's kind of weird that he's not here still. Alright, I, I need to do something because I just blank while I was talking. fun tracks though. There we go. 
Oh damn, I passed you? Like, I, it didn't register that I passed this King Boo. Okay. Damn. I never knew I needed to daisy with monster truck wheels. How could I have been so blind all my life? this goes. I also find it cute that they, uh, theme the ghosts around the track. I sure am good at video games. <laughs> fucking up against ghosts. <laughs> I'll finish this track and then we can perish in 200. It's at 49% power, by the way. Huh? The switch is at 49% power, by the way. Okay. So it's doing alright, but, uh, you know. Well, I'm not gonna, like, go on forever. I'll probably, like, cap us off at somewhere around two, uh, two hours of Mario Kart. Oh, shit. Yeah, and, uh, it definitely won't run out by that point, so... Yeah. <clears throat> but, going off just Big Run or just Mario Kart, I definitely can't do, like, four to six hour streams of this. <laughs> Especially solo. It, it, I think this reaffirms that I do want to do uh, more streams with friends like this. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> Are you ready to suffer? <coughs> okay. I can't wait to fly off a road 5,000 times and bump into a wall 6,000 times. 
Appearance. You ready? Hmm. Yeah. Alrighty. Do you want to add anything hellish like hectic items, hard CPU? Uh, hectic items. All right, let's suffer. And we're not stopping until all 48 are done. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but only, okay, only if all 48 are baby car, because of how short it is. <laughs> Then it'd be like a minute to a minute and a half for each race, and then that might actually be viable. <laughs> Especially at 200 CC, that would be really short, you know. Even with how many laps it has. Unless we explode and die. I mean, true, but like that course in particular on 200 CC is. Uh, yeah, I'll explode and die. Reason. I fucked that up. Oh uh, yeah, I'm already feeling it. I'm already feeling it. I'm really feeling it. I fucked <laughs> that up. Holy shit. I forgot just how much. Wow. Doing a Rainbow Road in particular on 200 CC may not have been the wisest of choices. You think I chose this because? I explicitly chose this for 200. This isn't that bad actually. Okay, now it's that bad. How do you feel? <coughs> hmm. Ah, yes. The silence is my answer, to be clear. Yeah. They should make... Why would you do this? Why would you even suggest... Curve. Why would you even suggest such a, such a thing? Smooth difficulty curve. <laughs> you chose Rainbow Road first, so clearly the logical step up is the one course that's harder than Rainbow Road. Why are you like this? <laughs> Damn, I just cannot catch a break with that today. Ow. 
<laughs> it begins. Shelling us. What would you do if instead of a uh, shell, you got a shell from Half Life 2? Did I actually get first on that? Okay. Well, I was in the lead for a while there, actually, funnily enough. Yeah. And the red shells began. My brain just kind of shut off, and the next thing I knew was in first place at the end of the race. <laughs> Life just works like that sometimes. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to choose Rock Rock Mountain. Okay, where can I? No, that's just leaving my group. Fine. Why? Thank gods. I'm spared. I'm going to keep trying to figure <coughs> out what's like harder than 3DS Rainbow Road, but easier than Ninja Hideaway or whatever it's called. Easier than Ninjago. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy. Surprisingly, I think this might be worse like this than Rainbow Road was. Sorry, say that again? I... Surprisingly, I think this might be worse like this than Rainbow Road was. Yeah, because all the enclosure. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's very blatantly not designed for 200cc. <laughs> like, I don't know. It, it's not always all that bad, it's just... It also is very clearly not made for this, because... Oh, wow, that's a lot of height. <laughs> okay, Bouncer Jr. and I both ate shit. I am eating shit. I am in ninth place. I am in tenth place. Okay, let's even the playing field. Suffering. Maybe, maybe getting Snatch River Road would have been a mercy. Possibly. Oh. I somehow finished in first. I got second. After the very last second. Pain. <coughs> <laughs> my soul has left my body.
You know, that wasn't an invitation, though. So? <laughs> this will be worse anyways. It's the worst of Rainbow Road and Rock Rock Tunnel in 200, probably. No, I know it's or probably the worst of that, and I'm saving that for after it ends up selecting Super Nintendo Rainbow Road. Hmm. Again, Gosh. trying to do a smooth difficulty curve for starting with a Rainbow Road. I'm already off track. Ow! Shy Guy, what the fuck? Oh no. Oh my god! This is why I chose a handling focus to be a goal. This is why I just said, fuck it, let's have fun. <laughs> fuck around and find out? No, fuck around and have fun. <laughs> Maple on 200 is an experience. Eight, by the way. I'm in first place. Like, no. Damn you. Uh, what? What? So I got hit by lightning. Did you bam shock and I dodge? Fell the floor. Huh, that's not a shock dodge. through the floor, because the, the, apparently the wooden boards do not have good hitboxes. Alrighty. What in the world is going on with me running into the weirdest bugs during this? It's your curse. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Thanks, Lakitu. Uh, that's the worst possible time you could have done this. I would have preferred if you pushed me back a little bit onto the ramp because now I went from like first to eighth. Somehow in third. I'm in tenth now. God's damn it. First. What happened to that race? I got sixth. I almost had fifth. <coughs> I like how we're fighting for third place. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's AI. The normal AI. Yeah, because we suck at this game. <laughs> <laughs> no, normally you run into these kinds of bugs in Mario Kart, by the way. Oh, I've no. noticed that, in particular, the DLC courses seem to be bugged for some reason. Mm. Like, they have weird hitbox issues and whatnot that I've never seen a Mario Kart game have before. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Are these just really, really hastily put together or something? I started that trick way too early. <laughs> okay, great start. Yeah, this isn't that bad. Oh, okay. That was both bad and good. Ah, shit. 
Well, at least everyone got lightning while I got while I fell. Bum, ba, da, uh, uh. Bullet in six? Huh? Sure. I mean, it is friends and items. Bullet still in six. True. I feel like I have the exact right car for this. I'm come. I'm about to lap last place. <laughs> I, uh, I I I may have. Uh... I think yours gave me a track in my favor big time. <laughs> Finish six. I'll take it. <laughs> I wasn't picking this because I was gonna be good at it. I was picking it because I know it's relatively fun for what it is. It's okay. It's probably best at this speed because otherwise I just don't super care about this track. <laughs> hmm. All right, sure. I'm ready for the actual difficult course now. It, it didn't select it, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're golden. the turns in this course are relatively unintuitive, so they literally just put a bunch of arrows everywhere instead of actually like trying to make the design better. I think that's a side effect of the dynamic layout this has. Yeah, still. Because, yeah, uh, I'm having trouble figuring out, like, uh, they'll be like, oh, I turned this way. Wait, no, it's that way? Oh, okay. Uh, the tour tracks like this tend to be like lap one's different than like lap two or three, and then like lap three might also be different, something like that. Yeah, this is a different tr part of the track. Hello. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, yep, unintuitive turn. That put me from first to, um, uh, well, I was about to say six, but now seven, because I got hit by something eight. Is it because, okay, yep, th this this is Mario Kart all day. Eat my dust. This turn just fuck with me never in a never ending way. You're not allowed to win Wario. So you're not allowed to win Wario. Only I can win. I like how Team RCC is so fast that I'm, uh, you can like drift while breaking. Hey, what if I told you I've basically been never breaking? <laughs> I keep forgetting my break exists. I've just been doing all of these at max speed. DRZC pretty much requires that kind of speed control on some tracks. <coughs> I, I, maybe that says something good about my drifting? I don't know. also have a car that's surprisingly slow or something. Bird handling that's weirdly specifically good for this. Mmm. Well, damn. This is one of the best looking tracks in the game, though. <laughs> yeah. 
Are you ready for all the weird twists and turns and enclosed spaces at this kind of speed with no rails for a lot of it, though? Yeah. Are you? No. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I think I said while you're gone, uh, clearly at some point on stream I should play Cars a video game. Clearly. The worst thing is, is like on some level I'm legitimately debating it. I mean, are you aware of its status uh, as actually being a surprisingly good licensed game? I would like to remind the court that I grew up both with the Cars video game and its sequel made international. I am more than familiar with those two games. As much as I fucking hate Disney, I think Cars is fucking weird. I do hold a level of nostalgia for those games. And it's weird seeing, like, I wouldn't say open world, but, like, mixing racing and, like, a large hub world that's just so bizarre. You don't really see that yeah. often, in my opinion. I mean, I guess you could see it nowadays with stuff, well, with stuff like Need for Speed, but... Don't get me wrong, Cars wasn't doing that in a vacuum, but... Oh, I know. Uh, it, it's just it like... It wasn't common, either. It's not, you know, your Forzas and whatnot. See ya. I got Mario Karted. <laughs> Twice. Three times. Four times! <laughs> you can't trip me up, I'm too powerful. <laughs> you ever just get knocked off the course, then hit something, then get knocked off the course by a bullet bill? Oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> like, goodness me, that put me far back. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I maybe expected something like this to happen on a course like this, you know? Yeah. Hmm. You don't select a course like this to not have something like that happen. Tonight's a very interesting night. Very experimental, very fun. <laughs> this is one of the better courses in 3DS though, and again, I've already said, like, I like 3DS's lineup a lot. Trashed up everything. Dare I say, Music Park is like the Waluigi Pinball of 3DS. Kind of it, is. Maybe not as iconic, but up there. Ah, shit. Dare I say, if it's not as iconic, it's at least as good of a course, if not a better one. Somehow. Oh, yeah. Uh, this has more going on than Waluigi Pinball, like... Waluigi Wall Pinball is strong theming, but, uh, it's a lot of, like, normal track a lot of the way through. It only, like, really gets to its gimmick at the very end. <laughs> oh no. I just cannot. I, I need to break on that. Really? Video games.
Oh, shit. I'm, <laughs> I'm playing very poorly. Oh, see ya, I guess. <laughs> uh, okay, sure that works. Ow! I was about to do a sick boost. Fuck you. I fucked that up. This is honestly worse than Warrior's Gold Mine. <laughs> I got four. All of your like evil picks aren't that evil. <laughs> you assume I wasn't picking this, thinking that it would probably be surprisingly rough on 200 CC. <laughs> Let's a fucking go to Berlin for some reason. Phew. The relief I, I felt was palpable. Know why I was selecting that one? Sorry, what? I think we both know why I was selecting that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, fuck it up. I thought I was gonna do this burnout or whatever the fuck you call it, but I guess not. I like how Mario Kart 8 out of all things is the closest Nintendo's made to making an F-Zero game in a while. Honestly, I'm still surprised they only put in the tracks in the car, but not Falcon himself. Well, I mean, the car was in, like, Mario Kart Wii. It was? I believe so. The Blue Falcon, I believe, was a car in Mario Kart Wii. Huh. Even still, it's just like you had full, you had two full-on F-Zero tracks. You don't add Falcon. Yeah, it's kind of weird. But like the game in general on 200 CC is uh, probably the closest there's been to an F-Zero game in a long time, at least officially. That is uh, technically the closest is like Ow. Uh, Fast R Max, but yeah. Oh. Well, actually, no, the, the closest is now some other game. I don't remember the name of it, honestly, but uh, I could probably figure it out if I actually would spend more time. There's, like, now a uh, more direct successor with mechanics closer to F-Zero. Um, uh... Ha! Galaxy Brain throw. While I just dodge an don't fail to dodge an obvious car. I thought it was too busy, like, feeling haha -ha galaxy brain. Ah, uh, shit. Ow. Oh, oh, gods. Interesting to see Womps here, though. I am, uh, how you say, fucking trash at video games. Sometimes so am I. Fifth place! Yay! Yeah, let's go! We seem to soon be hitting uh, two hours on Mario Kart 8. 
So I think we probably only have a few races left, yeah? Mm -hmm. I, I'd say we should maybe close out with, like, two to five more races. Yeah. Somewhere around there. I... Wow, I fucked that up. Why, Mushroom, have you forsaken me? This is more hellish than I expected. I'm just too hard of CC in general. Oh, I know. All the like ridiculously, normally ridiculously tough stuff is weirdly easy feeling, and then all the like really actually hard stuff ends up being the stuff that's normally really mundane. Yeah. Like, isn't that just too hard of CC? With a few exceptions, of course. Meet me on Luigi Circuit GCN 500cc. <laughs> Come on. I'm getting Mario Karted. Please help. Just in the nick of time. I nearly got second, but then a fire flower hit me. Oh. A Deluxe is fun. It doesn't have everything, you know, perfectly. Like, again, I wish the original tracks were stronger. There's no mission mode. You can't do stocks in battle mode. But racing itself is pretty strong. There's a strong did selection. Two to five more, and it did select this. I think this would be a good one to finish with. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if I win. Okay. <laughs> Pro tip: I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Never will I. Sure. This is the exception I was referring to where- No, this is still just brutal on 200cc. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's not weirdly easy. It, it's still utterly brutal. It's still one of the hardest courses in the entire game. Yeah. I like how they just casually made a course part of the Rainbow Road, like, the first wave of DLC. <laughs> yeah, the DLC always struck me as, oh, it'll look easy, and then, like, Shroom Ridge and this were, like, my nightmares realized. Oh no, I hear that.
mean, I was first for some of the race. Some. <laughs> Still not in last. I'll take it. I'm in third. I'm in second. Shit. Really? Fireball? Man, I I actually just kind of hate this course. I think it is obnoxious and evil. It just has like a bunch of like small boxy things and fucked up sharp turns. You're either you're like falling off and ramming into things constantly interchangeably every two seconds. It is not fun. I got second. That, uh, that was the best I could hope for. I got six. I think we, if we get Merry Mountain, we'll have done all of these uh, DLC tracks in 200. <laughs> Which, that could be the good closing point. Okay. But if you want, we could do Baby Park as like the real closing out. <laughs> no, no, I think this works. Alrighty. What if sometime you do a stream that's just um, uh, Baby Park for 48 races on <laughs> 200 CC? No. Things that are actually fun. I want my pranks to be fun, not monotonous. Come on. I'm getting Mario carded. Which I guess is appropriate for the final race. <laughs> it's also funny because we open on Merry Mountain, we're closing on Merry Mountain. That was the exact worst time that could have happened. So, I'm getting Mario carded, but I haven't been getting coconut mold. Thankfully not. Thankfully <laughs> not. It got first, by the way. That's a good way to close out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to double check though, just to make sure we did the four in the previous cut. Yeah, we did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, one second. Is there anything you, uh, since I, I don't have, like, your audio set to go to the closing time screen, is there anything you want to say, uh, before, uh, I switched to national closing time? Hmm? Like, I mean, like a goodbye or something. Like, 
Oh, anything you want to say, or...? Yeah, just before I go to closing time. Oh, yeah. Uh, hmm. <coughs> uh, it's been fun. I want to do this again sometime. Oh, absolutely. That's what I really want to say, I, I can think of, honestly. Maybe I'll drag you on to something like a Mega Man 7 stream. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be fun in hell. Possibly. I don't know. It's really impossible to predict how I feel about any given Mega Man game. <laughs> it's like, oh, I went from the highs of X2 and then immediately came crashing down with X3. I cannot predict how these will go. But, uh, yeah. I think that's my cue to call it. So let's, uh, okay. close. Let's close off. I had a lot of fun. And yeah, it <laughs> kind of some way, but uh, this was a really fun stream. And I'd say the experiment of uh, mixing it up like this and trying to co-stream was a big success. I, I definitely want to hang out with friends on stream more. So uh, keep an eye out on that. So, uh, peace to YouTube.